Hello, my name is Crystal Andrade and I'm working on the Objective 5. I'm studying the sustainable role of agricultural residues in future bioeconomy strategies and its dependency upon carbon returns to arable soils. Agricultural residues are a widely available feedstock for a variety of bioeconomy conversion pathways. However, their use is limited because at the end it will result in the reduction of soil organic carbon. Since the availability of these residues depends on local conditions, the sustainable amount that could be harvested should be evaluated in a specially explicit way. The aim of this project is to determine the amount of crop residues that could be harvested for bioeconomy processes when we consider that the crop products, which are rich in a form of carbon and not so easily degradable, are returned to the soils as a strategy to maintain or enhance the soil organic carbon levels. Our hypothesis is that this will result in higher amounts of crop residues that could be harvested for bioeconomy. The geographical scope of our project includes uh, the whole territory of France and one province in Ecuador. We are considering six different bioeconomic conversion pathways. So we consider the return of digestate from anaerobic digestion, biochar from pyrolysis, hydrochar from hydrothermal liquefaction, tar and char from gasification, and venous and fibers from biothermal production. For bio-based products, we are still defining which products to include in the study. The project could be divided in different stages. So our first stage uh, consists in determining the potential crop residues that can be harvested for the bioeconomy processes while maintaining or enhancing the current soil organic carbon levels in France. Then we are going to optimize this through the redistribution of carbon to the most vulnerable lands. We are going to perform sensitivity analysis and we are going to extrapolate the insights to a case in Ecuador. To complete the stage one, we have clustered France by types of climates, soil and agricultural practices and crop rotations. In this way, the simulation units have been created. We are now preparing our bioeconomy scenarios. So we are performing mass balances for each process to determine the carbon content in the co-products. And then we are going to use a carbon modeling software to determine the long-term SOC levels. Uh, we have to say that long-term for us is a period of 100 years. And this is a relative study where the long-term SOC levels have to be equal or higher than the current soil levels. And then we will determine which is the amount of crop residues that could be harvested for each bioeconomy scenario. To complete the first task, we have been working in collaboration with people from INRA, from the 4 per thousand project, and we are working, we are building our project on the results so we are using the same simulation units. Here I present the methodology followed by INRA to create the simulation unit. What has been done is basically combine the climate and soil information with the agricultural information and then selecting only those uh, UPCs or pedoclimatic units that correspond or that contain those crops representing at least 10% of the agricultural surface of France. Then, when the crop sequences, type of soils and type of fertilization are combined, it results in 62,557 different simulation units and we are using these same units. Here in red, I present the UPCs included in this study and are basically those containing the main crops of France and also the temporary grasslands. All the UPCs or places containing permanent grasslands has been excluded. For the yield of the crops, we are using the results of the 4 per thousand study obtained from STIX, which is a plant model. And for the climate data, we are using the RCP 4.5 scenario because we are modeling for the future. Uh, we had meetings with experts, so we 
concluded that this was one of the most probable scenarios to happen in the future. Uh, we also selected the carbon model to use in our project and to do that we did a review on the SOC model characteristics of different models and we had meeting with experts and from the ZSOPRA report from Aden they found that AMG followed by ROTC have the best performance in the estimation of carbon stocks so when we consider this performance and based on the review we did so for the availability of the data and the easiness to manipulate the models we selected AMG as our main model and then we are going to validate our results using ROTC we received data from INRA from the 4000 project in a format required for sticks However, AMG works in an Excel environment, so we have to manipulate all the data to prepare it as required for AMG. We have finished doing that and we have all our reference scenarios ready. It resulted in more than 8 million rows of information. Uh, here I present the AMG results for one UPC under the reference scenario. So the UPC is located here. The numbers refer to the location and the saffron grid. Since this is a reference scenario, they work in business as usual and the residues are considered to be restitute. And for this particular UPC, we find eight different simulation units. In the plot, we could see the average uh, model SOC for the UPC presented here. So for the RCP 4.5, we found that the SOC is expected to decrease. This is an opportunity for the co-products which are rich in highly recalcitrant carbon to be used as a way to maintain or enhance these SOC levels. Now we are preparing the bioeconomy scenarios, so we are performing the mass balances. Here I present the example for the biochar case, where we consider a pyrolysis process of 3 minutes for 100 Celsius. It means fast time, low temperature, which is uh, the best for bio oil production. And based on this study, we found that 26% of the initial carbon will be contained in the biochar. Since these co-products are highly stable, we are doing also a review on the recalcitrants. Here I show the results of the biochar review, where we included incubation, filtrial, and modeling studies. Uh, for biochar produced from crop residues, sugar cane bagasse, a peanut shell, and poultry litter, and animal manure. We excluded the woody based biochar. We found high limitations in this study because there is not a lot of available information, and also mostly these studies have been done for biochar with soil amendment purposes. It was prepared at a slow times high temperatures, which is not so good for the production of bio oil. However, including all the information we could have found, we found 31 experiments with 132 data sets. After removing the outliers, we found that for all the studies, the average carbon stability is around 96%, and when we consider only those biochars produced at the temperature range of 300-500 Celsius, best for bio oil, the stability will be around 95%. Also, when we perform the we, we remove the outliers, peanut shell and poultry and animal biochars were removed. Here I present the results for all the data and by feedstock. So we found that for most of the feedstocks, um, the recalcitrants could be even higher, but we like to be a bit more conservative and maintain this average value. When we see the IPCC guidelines, they recommend a value of 80%, but when we go to the studies they included to obtain that value, most of those are woody biochars, 
and are also based only in studies longer than one year and that show modeling of two um, compartments or two pool models. So trying to be a bit more similar, we are considering only those experiments longer than one year and we remove the peanut shell and animal manure or digested biochar to contain only crop residues biochar. This resulted in 68 data sets. And after removing the outliers, the average carbon stability for biochars in the group around 300-500 Celsius degrees was a 94%. So after all this review and all the considerations, we like to be conservative and we have selected 94% as the carbon stability of our biochar. Then we did something similar for the digestate, but we included here different digestate products. So uh, it resulted in 17 different experiments with 95 data sets. After removing the outliers, it resulted in a 70% stability of the digestate. And when we focus only in the modeling that are done for one year, it results in a stability of 64%. So here I present the results for each feedstock. If we focus here in the crops bio-waste, uh, those are digestates produced only using crops or bio-waste as food waste or household waste. And we found there a recalcitrance of about 64%. If we compare these values with the data included in AMG, we found that they are very similar because AMG considers a 63% of humification. We also compared the stability of the digestates with the stability of their corresponding raw feedstock when it was possible, and we found that for the crops feedstock, it increased in a 60% from the raw material to the digestate. So we found that in AMG, the animal raw material had a humification content of 52%. So when we included the increase on stability, we found that it will be around 83%. However, we are a bit conservative about this because it's too high when compared with the results obtained from the uh, review. So by now we are maintaining the 64,000 value, but we keep these other results for the sensitivity analysis. This is the work we have been done until now, and we are still working on finishing this recalcitrance review for the other co-products and the mass balances to start running the, uh, the economy scenarios. Thank you for your attention.